Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I will be talking about the 5 must-have strength-oriented weapons in Elden Ring, as well as the locations of where you can get these. Note that for two of these weapons, which I will specify later, you will need to kill two bosses for these. These weapons can be found before you kill the first main boss and are all located in Limgrave. Subscribing is always appreciated, and let's get into the video. First weapon on our list and probably the most accessible one to new strength builds is going to be the Zwei Hander. The Zwei Hander is actually south of the stranded graveyard and you can actually just ride backwards. Note that you will probably need your horse mount to access this area, however you do get your horse mount after you visit three sites of grace and talk to Melina if you're just starting out the game and want to get a pretty good strength weapon. It's a pretty long ride but I am starting out from the starting area so that everyone can follow along but you're going to want to be heading down south and following my guide there you're going to see a grace that you can actually rest at if you look on the map you will see that there is a bridge that connects these two lands i'm pretty sure however i didn't know that so i just made the jump with the horse but you can cross the bridge i'm assuming without the horse mount so you can actually get here literally the moment you start the game from the grace we'll be heading straight to the west if you line up the top of your screen where it shows your directions and just head straight west you're gonna be on track to get to the place However, if you follow me on screen, I will be leading you guys to a sacred church that you can actually get a sacred tier from to upgrade the amount of health and FP you get when you use your Crimson Flasks. From here, you'll be heading straight west until you see a small isolated shack, and that is where you're going to see your merchant where you can buy and purchase these Y-Hander. These Y-Hander will be costing 3,500 runes, so make sure you have some bread before you get here. Unfortunately, in this video, your boy was kind of broke. He came with unprepared pockets. However, I'm going to be showcasing the weapon move set because it has a similar move set to another sword I'm showcasing in this video. So when you see this one, you'll pretty much get an idea of how this Y hander is going to swing as well. Again, this is not these Y hander. This is another sword that has a similar move set, but I would highly recommend these Y hander as a starting weapon because it'll be vastly superior to the starting weapons that most strength classes get in this game. Leveling up to 13 strength will allow you to use this weapon properly if you two-hand it, making it a really good weapon to use early game that is actually affordable because of the way two-handing works in this game. Overall, high quality weapon, definitely recommend checking it out. The next weapon will be the classic, fan favorite, tried and true Guts Greatsword. You will be finding it in the Kalid region, it will lead to your east of Limgrave. You can actually walk here, again you can be here without beating the first boss. Following along from the first grace, if you go to this point in the map where there's kind of a road, if you look on your left side from the cliff that you're on, you're going to see a carriage. And when you go to that black carriage, there is going to be your Guts Greatsword. Now, fair warning, there's a lot of enemies here and they're probably going to kill you, especially if you come here early game, you're probably going to get one shot. So your best interest is to get this sword and either kill them all like the pro gamer you are or just simply run away. There's no shame in running away. Zero shame. This weapon will require a whopping 31 strength to use properly and have a C scaling in strength and an E scaling in dexterity. Now because of how two handing works you can probably use this weapon I would say around maybe 27 strength or 26 strength so you don't actually need to hit the 31 cap that's just to use the weapon one handed but if you two hand it you get a 50% boost to your strength stat. The description of this weapon says it launches people in the air. That alone, I would highly recommend using this again if you're a strength build. You won't be able to use it right away, but later on, as you level up your strength and as you go later in the game, you're going to be hitting a lot more damage with this than weapons like the Zweihander because this is a pure strength weapon. I recommend using this weapon late game when you have the strength to use it. It's going to be hitting a lot harder than your average weapons. The next weapon for today is going to be the Meteor Blade. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the first time I've seen a strength-based katana. However, this is a strength and intelligence hybrid katana. You will need 18 intelligence to use this weapon properly. But if you are one of the rare few 
we will still be in Kalid, and you can actually use the same bonfire that we used to head to the Meteor Blade. You will be passing by a lot of ruins and a lot of mushrooms to keep you on track, and you're just going to keep heading south. You can use the golden tree that you see in the distance as a sort of waypoint, because if you keep following that, you'll pretty much be on track to get to the blade. The entrance of the ruins is going to be a staircase that leads downward, and actually, fun fact, each ruin in the game so far I've seen has these secret type of dungeons that you can explore, so you should always check out the ruins if you see them on the map. Also, the ruins is going to be on the lower level. I was spending a really long time trying to look for it. And as we head downward, there's going to be a lot of poison type of enemies that are down here that will try and poison you. However, if you run straight through and just head forward, you're going to see the chest that is going to contain your blade. The Meteoric Blade is going to have a D in Strength and Intelligence scaling, and an E in Dexterity, which makes this weapon get more damage if you upgrade your strength. This weapon has been one of the coolest strength weapons I've seen because it's actually fast and has a really cool weapon art in Gravitas, which pulls in people towards you. It's literally Shinra Tensei, like, it's actually wild. It has a 15 Strength requirement and a 18 intelligence requirement but after that you'll be able to have fun and use this weapon i highly recommend it to have a fast-paced alternative to your strength build the next weapon on our list is going to be the grafted blade greatsword the location for this sword is actually going to be the one where you need to kill a boss in order to get it you will be heading to the bottom of the map like just straight just like completely down but if you're following along when we got to the church earlier you can actually warp there and save some time and just head straight south like it's just gonna be there arriving at castle Morn, probably like top 10 hardest castle names i've ever heard not even lying if we follow this path from the grace i'm actually going to be heading straight to the boss i won't show the boss so that you don't get spoiled you can experience him for yourself a little challenging but if you come here with a decent sized weapon you should honestly be okay The path to the boss will have us walk straight past these enemies and make a right. There's going to be a person over there, you can just pass him and climb this ladder. He will probably chase you as a warning. If you need to slow down and kill the people in this level, you can do so because they can be a little challenging. Uh, but we're just going to keep heading straight forward. Actually, if you come to this little crumbled wall that's missing, we can actually drop down and there's going to be a grace there. If we continue, we're going to keep dropping down. Plus also, fun fact, if you drop down from that ledge, you will get a stone sword key for free. As you walk along this bridge, that tower you see in the distance is actually going to have the twin blade talisman. That will be pretty helpful. It strengthens the last hit of your R1 combos. But we're going to keep following the path, drop down these two wooden beams. Just make sure to line yourself up in the middle. And if you turn to your left, there's actually going to be another grace, which is going to be very helpful right before the boss. And we're going to keep walking forward, drop down, and the boss is going to be right in front of us. If you are struggling with the boss, I would suggest using a bleed weapon because he can be afflicted by bleed, which does a huge chunk of burst damage if the bar builds up, which means you just have to hit him frequently enough to get the bleed buildup effect to lose that big chunk of health. The Grafton Greatsword is going to need a 40 goddamn strength investment and a 14 in dexterity. It will have a C scaling in strength and an E scaling in dexterity. This is another late game weapon you'll probably be using after you go a bit into Elden Ring. Overall, this weapon just seems powerful, like I would use it if I were you. And it's weapon art. I can't use it properly because I can't use the weapon efficiently, but apparently it buffs your weapon and gives you poise and buffs all your stats. Honestly, it sounds pretty high-end to me. I would definitely use this late game. It sounds like a pretty good weapon. Saving the best for last, Crimson Smo Great Hammer. That's not what it's actually called, right? But it's as big as Smo's Great Hammer. It might as well be it, right? This is going to be the longest route so the route will be starting from the red circle on the map and we will be heading to the yellow arrow on the map this is going to be in northern limb grave if you haven't unlocked this area 
it is the swamp that's on the left is going to be in that type of region but if we follow along on screen we're going to get the glenstone key now we need this to get into ray lucaria so that we can meet the person that will take us to the next location if you follow along on screen The glenstone key is going to be on our right, however it will be guarded by a dragon. I am not killing the dragon in this video. I'm probably going to kill him at some point and say what he drops, but behind the dragon you're going to want to sneak behind him. There's going to be a dead Ray Lucarian sorcerer and he's going to have the glenstone key on his body. After we get the key we can warp back to the first grace that we started from. I'm warping a little ahead from the grace we started from, but it's still on the same path and you can follow here. You'll just have to run a little bit more. And past these trees are going to be the South Ray Lucarian Gate. Now you can just clear through these enemies and head straight through. It's a pretty straightforward path, you can't really get lost. But after you clear through these enemies, you will get to the grace called South Ray Lucarian Gate. Once you hit the grace and ride up the long and exciting elevator ride, we're going to walk up these stairs and go straight into the building and make a left followed by another left to get the grace that's actually behind us. Once we rest here, we're going to walk straight forward and we're going to make a left and walk out. There's going to be a couple of enemies on these sides that will try and ambush you and do a grab attack. And there's also going to be a couple of dogs here that can be pretty annoying. Just try and stay clear of them and keep walking straight forward. By the way, for mage builds, if you keep walking forward, there will be a person there that you can kill and he will drop a gravity spell. But if you don't need that, you can just keep walking and following my guide where we take the elevator and we're going to ride it up and we're going to ride it down to get to the bottom of the elevator where we'll see the person that needs to kill us so that we can get to the place we got to go to. Here at the bottom we're going to see the Iron Maiden and when they kill us we're going to actually be transported to the Volcano Manor which is where we're going to need to go to get to the weapon. Try and get her to do this grab attack to kill you. I'm not sure if you warp there if she does any other move to kill you because these are the moves that she killed me with to get here and I've gotten here twice consistently so just try and do that for safety. Spawning at the Volcano Manor. It's going to have a lot of lava in this place and a lot of bat people that will try and attack you so just be sure to avoid them as best you can and follow my direction so you can get straight to the boss. This boss for me was very difficult. It took me a lot of tries on my stream. You can watch me kill him there. I trust they can kill him. My advice is to try and split the wheel one and have him just be aggressive on you so that you can take care of him. Using a lot of summons as well will help. Mostly ones where it's multiple people so they can take aggro off of the scythe one. Trust me, we're almost there. Simply follow me along across this very long and winding river. And when we get to the end, Finally, the weapon will be there, being used by a knight. As you turn right on the road and go up, there's going to be a castle there. You're going to want to kill the fire knight that's outside because he will annoy you and probably kill you with the knight inside. He's a little difficult to kill. Walking up the stairs will finally be our knight, aka Smell holding the weapon that we need. This guy is going to be using a lot of fire 
with his attacks, so you're gonna want to dodge him. Coming here early will be a difficult fight, but you can kill him. Using the previously mentioned weapons like the Zweihander, and you come here, if you put an upgrade or two on it, you could probably kill him. Prelates Inferno Crozier, like the weapon just sounds exotic. The weapon requires 45 strength, it has a C in strength, and a E in dexterity. This weapon, honestly, it's another one of those late game slash mid game weapons where you'll have to level up your strength a bit before you get to use it. But honestly, this weapon is my favorite on the list I've made so far. It has a flame weapon art. If I could use the weapon properly, it would show it, but the weapon basically lights itself on fire and you scoop people up. It just looks amazing. I would highly recommend grabbing this weapon early on so that when you level up your strength enough, you can use it pretty much, I would say, late early game. 45 strength, it sounds like a lot, but if you solo level your strength, you should get there around level 30. And that will be the 5 weapons that you should get in your starting playthrough of Elden Ring. All these weapons can be found again in Limgrave before you even fight the first main boss. If this helped you out, subscribing is always appreciated. I'll be making more of these guides to help you guys out as I find cool weapons along the way. But that'll be it for me. Take care. See you soon. Love and light.